Hi everyone, welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we are solving a problem from the concept of gravitation and the problem is about inverse square law of attraction between the two masses separated by a certain distance. Let me read out first of all the problem. There are three identical particles, each of mass m and they are placed at the three corners of an equilateral triangle of side A. At what speed they must move so that they revolve under the influence of one another gravitational force in a circular path. They have to move in a circular path circumscribing the triangle. The circular path has to be circumscribing the triangle and while still they preserve the equilateral triangle. That's the problem. Let us try analyze it. So there are an there is an equilateral triangle at the corner of each corner of an equilateral triangle there is a mass m side of this equilateral triangle is A and then on each particle there will be a gravitational force of attraction if I consider this particle say for example on this particle this particle will apply a gravitational force and this particle also apply a gravitational force because gravitational force exists between every two masses and you know gravitational force is always an attractive force so on this particle this particle applies a gravitational force on this particle this particle also applies a gravitational force both are equal in magnitude because these masses are same and the distance of separation is also same and we know the angle being an equilateral triangle every time angle is 60 degree what's the value of that f first of all we can write as using a Newton law of gravitation g1 m2 by r square that's nothing but a square so the gravitational force in both the cases is g m square by a square but there are two different forces then what is the resultant of these two gravitational forces? I can find out using the parallelogram law of vectors. You know in the case of parallelogram law of vectors f resultant is square root of f1 square plus f2 square plus 2f1 f2 cos theta. But f1 and f2 are equal, both are equal in magnitude. So root of f square plus f square plus 2f square of cos theta. Simplifying that further, 2f square plus 2f square cos theta. Taking 2f square common, 2f square of 1 plus cos theta. In trigonometry, you know, there is a formula. 1 plus cos theta is 2 cos square theta by 2. So altogether the answer is 4f square cos square theta by 2 under the square root. If I take the root, its value will be 2f cos theta by 2. That's the f resultant force. Let's identify what is its value is. Let us try to simplify. implies f resultant is 2 we know the f value g m square by a square cos we know the theta value also 60 by 2 so 2 g m square by a square cos 30 cos 30 sin 60 root 3 by 2 2 and 2 gets cancels so f resultant is root 3 gm square by a square that's one point 
what is the direction of this f resultant force also we need to know the direction of f resultant force the resultant of any two vectors always lies in between the vectors being these two vectors are equal in magnitude the resultant will be exactly in between them making an angle 30 degree this is the direction of f resultant force exactly in between these two forces you know there is the center of this triangle here is the center of the triangle you know this distance some x say for example i want to calculate the distance of that x by drawing a perpendicular line this is a 90 degree this becomes an a by 2 this angle is also 30 degree so if i write say cos 30 degree that will become automatically a by 2 by x you know cos 30 is sin 60 is root 3 by 2 is nothing but a by 2x so the x value is nothing but equal to a by root 3 so the resultant force is acting towards the center of the triangle that center is separated from any of the corner with a distance x where that x value is nothing but equal to a by root 3 this force who is acting towards the center provides a necessary centripetal force therefore the body can continue its circular path whenever if a body has to be in a circular motion there must be a centripetal force you know centripetal force never comes from outside any of an existing force who is acting towards the center is called centripetal force so in this case centripetal force is this much acting at a distance of something like a by root 3 so if I once know the equation for the centripetal force then I can equate the centripetal force to the existing force so for the body to continue its uh, circular path for the body to continue its circular path this is circular path all the bodies are moving along the circumscribing this triangle just like this they are all moving this way because of the forces that are acting so for a circular force for a circular motion there must be a centripetal force from where you are going to get that centripetal force is nothing but the resultant force acting on any of the particle I know the formula for the centripetal force as mv square by r that r is the distance from the center radius of the circular path that's nothing but x in our problem equal to the f resultant force f resultant is root 3 gm square by a square like we have calculated but I know the value of this x also a by root 3 let me substitute that value m v square a by root 3 equal to root 3 gm square by a square simplifying this further m v square root 3 by a root 3 g m square by a square now one a can be cancelled this root 3 can be cancelled one m can be cancelled Writing the remaining terms, let us see what is remaining. V square, root 3 got cancelled, M cancelled, and A cancelled, equal to G M by A. I want the velocity V, just take a square root, root of G M by A. This is the velocity with which each particle has to rotate so that it can continue its a circular path still keeping the equilateral triangle intact that's it thank you for watching keep coming back for more and more video lessons thank you very much